So it gives me great pleasure to welcome you all to my lovely village hall and the community have been really kind in allowing me to use the hall for our socially distanced class today. I'm joined by Cameron and it's a great joy to have him because I can be back in my comfort zone um, teaching him and he can model the exercises instead of me. So we, I'm not going to be giving my usual hands-on corrections, I might just give Cameron the odd pointer um, as, as needed. Uh, so it's, it's still a sort of uh, distanced, adapted version of teaching, but hopefully this will feel a little bit more like how we work when we're um, on our mats in the halls doing our classes. So everybody, today's practice will include some uh, simpler core connection exercises. In some instances I'm going to give you an A version and a B version. You might choose to do both if you want a bigger workout or decide to do the slightly gentler version or the slightly stronger version. Um, because I've got Cameron with me today it made sense for me to include some of the stronger practices which perhaps those of you who are really keeping up your fitness levels might enjoy that and the, the gentlemen who are a bit stronger with their upper body, you know, there's something in there for you today as well. But um, as always, make sure that you're working in a way that suits your body. So do adapt and modify or mix and match today's exercises with those from the previous practices. I've tried to give you a little bit of a logical development. So um, after the, the wall work last week, which developed your stability and your connection and coordination a little bit more, we're now going to try out those skills on the mat without the props. So here we go. The camera is lying in semi-supine with the knees bent, the feet on the floor. He's going to bring his feet a tiny bit closer for our purposes here. I've put Cameron on top of the softball so that the movement we're going to do, because it's very subtle, very nuanced, that it's a little bit more visible um, on camera for you. Um, we're going to take pelvic clocks. This is a really good way to feel that internal sensation of how our deeper muscles are responsible for the position of the pelvis, both the stability and the mobility of the pelvis. So being on the ball because it's unstable means you have to tune in to your sense of control a little bit more than if you're on the floor. But if you don't have a softball at home, just do this exercise on the mat and all you will feel is that instead of your hips pressing more into the ball on one side, that you will feel that there is new, uh, the, the hips are more weighted into the mat as you move into this movement. Arms are lengthened by the side, we're relaxing the jaw, we're making sure that we can feel the bony landmarks of our skeleton on the mat where they should be, so that we're sort of feeling a sense of presence, both on the mat and in the space, and in terms of being mindful of where we are. So we're going to take a breath in, and on the out breath, Cameron is going to engage the deep abdominals and use the lower abdominals to draw the pelvis towards the ribs. In effect, he is now tipping his pelvis on the clock face towards the 12. And release, in breath, back to the centre. On the out breath, he's going to tip slightly towards the 6, so his pelvis is dipping slightly towards his heels. If you can't see this, hopefully the verbal cues will help you as well. It's quite difficult to see the movement, it's only small. Come back to the centre. He's now going to unweight his pelvis a bit like balance scales and on an out breath, tip the pelvis towards his right hand or towards the nine on the clock. We're trying to maintain a stability through the feet and the knees so that there's not too much movement with the legs here. There's not too much movement with the upper body. However, because our body is all joined up, you won't be as still as a statue. There's a slight movement as you transfer the weight. So he has just explored those four points of our clock, or the four points of the compass. And now I'm going to get him to make this into a circle. So we're going to breathe in. And on our out breath, he's going to tip the pelvis towards the ribs, engaging his deep abdominals, shortening the tummy muscles without doing too much with the legs. And then he's going to move his pelvis as if he's swilling gravy around a plate. 
So he's swilling the gravy round to the right. So in fact, Cameron is going anti-clockwise round his clock first, which is fine. And as he carries on the circle, he tips towards the six. And then he tips the other side and comes around the other side of the circle until the pelvis is tipped towards the ribs again. So this is like an oscillation. It's as though you're holding a plate and you're tipping the sauce on the plate and then trying to get the sauce to spread all the way around the rim of the plate. So don't forget to go into slight extension as well so the pelvis tips to the six, which is towards your heels, and then back up round. So I'm going to just ask Cameron to go the other way. Just play with this when you do this on your own. You can either do several clock faces going one way round just to get into that groove or you can switch, go once clockwise, once anti-clockwise. So Cameron is very slightly using his hips, hip joints themselves. You can see he's slightly abducting the legs. So I'm going to ask him to keep his knees a little bit more aligned over his feet. And that's just because he's so mobile that he, as he makes the movement, it's easy for him to escape into um, greater realms of mobility. And I would say just keep this on the small side so that you're more aware of your deeper muscle work. So you can stop the video there and just carry on with a little bit more of clock face if you wish. I'm going to ask Cameron to put his arms a little closer to his hips and just be aware of the setting of his shoulder blades and the feeling of the lats so that there's a sensation now into the top of the body as well. We're going to breathe in and on an out breath I'm going to, um, it, first of all I'm going to actually get you to take the ball out from underneath your hips because that would not be very easy with that. Just a little bit of side flexion, just to get the body moving a little bit. So on an out breath, he's going to bend to the right, so that the right hand is going to slide towards his right heel. Now my mat is very grippy, so you, you might find your hair catches on your mat. You may have to skin slightly and back to the centre. So it's useful doing your side bends on the mat because you're not using gravity to create movement you're actually consciously engaging the muscles in the side of the torso. So the obliques and the quadratus lumborum muscles are activated. So you're working all around that midsection. And you're only going to go as far as your muscles are able to, um, to, to move you, rather than when we stand up, the weight of the body just tends to take you into a side stretch. If you move on the exhale, the, the, the effort of the movement has greater flow, it's easier to work as you're drawing your deep abdominals in. And as you can see, Cameron's got a good reach there, he's got a good amount of movement in the spine, keeping that pelvic, pelvis, knees and feet nice and still. So there we have, I'm going to ask Cameron to put his arms out to the side now. And just for a little bit of movement with that upper spine, because it's easy to be very flat, very linear, and not to perhaps move your upper body. Sometimes we concentrate on the lower body. So on an out breath, Cameron's going to take a breath in, and on an out breath, he's going to peel his right hand off the floor, and he's going to trace the right hand across his chest and reach towards his left. Now I'm going to suggest to Cameron that he allows his body to leave the floor, but not his hips. So, and you can get as much movement as you feel you can freely find through that upper torso. If you need to lift your head off the floor to be comfortable, that's fine too. So on an out breath, the fingertips are leading the movement. And as you run out of movement in the shoulder, we get that lovely sensation of stretch across the back. And Cameron's keeping his lower half more or less still. So there's a nice feeling of relaxation as the weight of the arm falls back into the floor. But again, the movement is happening in a conscious way because we are supported by the floor. We have to consider how we're going to make that movement. It's not going to happen because of gravity. So twice more. Three times more because he started with his right hand. Important to allow your head to move, to think of it as movement, not just exercise, so that you don't get stuck with your head and neck. And then notice where you feel that you're into your resistance. So when your body runs out 
out of available manoeuvring space. Just acknowledge and respect that. It's good to know where that is, but not necessarily to push through. As you do your exercises, as you work those movements more, you find that the mobility increases through the practice. So that is our sort of simple practice. And next up is something a little bit more challenging that's a kneeling posture exercise. So Cameron is going to start in four point kneeling. And I do feel it's worth talking yourself through a few thoughts here. So I want you to check that your weight is even over the four corners. Think of your tabletop, your table legs. And release your shins. So I'm going to ask Cameron to try and release the front of his shin and ankle into the mat. And you'll notice that like some of you, he finds that quite difficult to stretch out that ankle. As you use the floor to, lift, to, to push your body weight out of the floor, feel a connection through the whole hand, through all five digits and through the palm. But keep the lower part of the arm slightly rotated in. A very slight relaxation in the elbow because you're holding with muscle, not locking the joint. And the upper arms are slightly rotating out. We're holding the armpits as wide as we can and the collarbones wide, whilst maintaining good positioning of the shoulder blades in the back. So Cameron has a good alignment that his neck is aligned with his spine and the crown of his head is leading out to one corner of the room, his tailbone to the other. So his back looks fairly straight, it's got its natural curves. He's going to take a breath in and on the out breath he's going to check that his deep abdominals draw strongly around his midsection to support his spine. So we do that first of all, and you can do that several times if you wish while you're in that position. We're now going to go into a little thread the needle. So I am going to do the cat curl, but I'm going to little thread the needle. I always like to just sort of test it a bit by throwing something yeah, extra in. So I'm going to take a breath in, and on the out breath, I'm going to release the right arm and slowly slide the back of the hand, very relaxed. And I want Cameron to relax his head so that his head goes through the eye of the needle. Softening slightly on the standing arm, but not losing the integrity of the position of the lumbar and the pelvis and the legs and the shins and the feet. So on the out breath, there's this softening through the upper back. You can't move if you hold the whole of you absolutely tight and rigid. So we know we've got to use that trunk support down below in those abs. We've got to keep the pelvis there instead, but we're releasing the head to allow that whole of that top half of the body find a fluid, elastic kind of motion. So we do that once more each side. So if you remember, in the simpler practice, you did this lying supine, reaching across with the arm. Now we're going underneath. So the last time, sliding, sliding, sliding. And Cameron's movement is increasing there as he warms up into that motion. He's going to go into a cat curl now, so we're going to breathe in first. And on the out breath, we start with the deep abdominals. We don't start with moving until we've found those internal muscles. Now, using the lower abdominals rather than the glutes, he's going to start to bring the pelvis underneath. And the flow of movement is going to creep, oh, the other way. The movement is going to creep through the spine until by relaxing the head, you have got a complete C shape or a sort of almost like a, an arched bridge. And he's going to release that and a gentle extension, not too much. Take a breath on the out breath, tail is under. He isn't using his shoulders, this is a spine trunk motion. So in this sense, his arms and shoulders are there for support rather than using the shoulders going up and down to the ears. Now this time, he's going to go into the cat curl, so he's going to round his spine up to the ceiling. Curl, curl, curl. I'm going to set a tiny pause, just to acknowledge that shape. Now, checking that his deep abs and his legs are nice and strong, he's going to walk his hands towards his legs without sitting down. So Cameron's got very, very long arms, he always has to sort of bend his arms. But he's going to gradually unfurl without letting his bum go closer to his feet. 
And once you've come up, we're going to lift the arms up above the head and release the feet from the floor for a little balance test. So you can be brave and do this perhaps on your sofa, facing the wall rather than facing out into the room. Placing the shins back down, we're going to take a breath in and we're going to just release into a side bend, one side, letting the arms curve. Being careful it doesn't become a twist as well, it's just a side bend. If we allow the head to relax and go with it, the whole movement will have a little bit more flow. So essentially he's not really using his hips and legs too much. It's very much looking at the motion of the spine. But this is the, the, the more challenging practice, so doing your side bends in this position is more challenging because posturally you're having to hold a lot more work there to hold the pelvis in place. So now the hand is going to come down, releasing, sitting back onto his heels, taking his hands slightly behind him and really nicely stretching the front of those shins and ankles. He's now lifting into his lovely position here without letting his head drop back. And this is a good stretch for those quads because sometimes we get a bit tight for all the walking and things, biking that we might be doing during lockdown. Relax back down, that's important. Come down, find your base, release forward back to the four point kneeling. I'm going to do all that one more time. So we're going to do the thread the needle. We're going to do the thread the needle just once each side this time. So that we now have a little fluid program. So we're getting our twists. Then find that four point kneeling stance and twist. And you can see that Cameron's working now with, with more awareness of his head and neck. So as you do the movement, it gets a little bit more embodied into the cat curl and then releasing shoulder blades down the back. So Cameron's being a bit careful. He's got quite a bendy spine, so he could probably extend quite a lot, but I don't want you to overdo that extension. It's better to keep some control there in the midsection, so that it's just a gentle arch of the spine. Now from your cat curl, walking back, taking the hands onto the legs, use your glutes here and keep your ankles and shins towards the floor, coming up with the arms lifted but the shoulders down the back. Take a breath in. Extra lift through the whole spine and around the head into your side, then taking the and lift on the in-breath. And on the out-breath. And keep stretching out the front of those shins and ankles so you get the length. And feel the stability of the shins into the floor. A little bit of work up the back of the legs into the glutes to keep your pelvis stable. And a lot of lift in that lower abdominal area, keeping that trunk. So now coming down, release, and you can see Cameron's just doing his back release there, got a nice little rest, and lifting. So we're not trying to push the hips up to the ceiling, we're not trying to drop the head back. It's not about creating a shape for aesthetic purposes, but what we want is to feel this long, strong torso. We want to feel a lengthening through the quads, feel a lengthening through the shins, coming back down. And if you relax now into your child pose, we can finish that little practice there. So now we're going to take some roll downs. If your back doesn't feel too comfortable with roll downs, then avoid this and perhaps go back to one of the earlier practices, do something more on the static abs where you keep your back nice and still and work your tummy muscles. Go back. Why? You keep your feather away. Need me? Just so the distance. Okay, I think I have got one close. Well, that's okay. Once you were going around, it's fine. Because you just sat up. I know, because you just sat up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So we're on to some abdominal work, and I'm going to take here some half roll downs. Um, this is a nice way to work the abdominals because, in fact, gravity is on your side. You, the weight of the body is quite happy about dropping down into the floor, and it's your use of your abdominals almost like a break that gives you the training. However, if your back is a little bit sore, this might not be appropriate. So go back to one of the static abdominal exercises where you work your abdominals without too much movement of your spine. So, we're going to start with the arms extended forwards and feet, knees, hips all nicely aligned. Cameron is able to sit quite straight, but don't 
panic if you're not completely upright. This is about moving, we're not going to be stuck in position too long. On an in-breath, we are going to get that lift, though, because this helps us to give that lengthening through the spine. On an out-breath, as the arms drop gently forward without shortening across the chest, the abdominals shorten to allow the spine to round. Now, I'm kind of strong enough to pause there for a moment, so I'm going to keep him there. Make sure that your deep abdominals are really worked so that as you start moving, you don't get your belly popping out. And come back up on the in-breath. So just an in and an out here. You don't have to go too far. Remember that as the arms come forward, the chest stays wide, but the chest bone drops towards the navel, the ribs slide towards the hips. This is a trunk motion, so don't do it with your shoulders and arms. Make sure you're feeling this in your body. So on an out breath, soften through the chest a little bit more. That's it, that's it. Now, just take a little note. I'm just watching Cameron's toes just slightly tense there. So keep your feet relaxed. Avoid using your legs. Try to differentiate um, in, in, through, through that sort of sensory awareness between what what your abdominals are doing and what your legs might be doing. So the legs don't want to do too much here. Relax your legs. Have a conversation with the different parts of your body. You know, are you delegating the work to the right muscles? So I'm going to just get Cameron to stay there and ask him to relax his feet, his knees, his hips, but work his stomach muscles harder. Open the chest a little bit more. Yeah, and release the ribcage a little bit more and come back up. He's smiling, he's okay. And we're now going to go all the way down. So in breath, out breath, arms come forward to balance the weight of the body. Soften that chest, soften that chest, soften, soften, melt, merge, connect with the floor, relax your shoulders, take your arms overhead into a little stretch. So in breath, on the out breath, arms come up, 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 up. One more time, and soften your chest, a little bit more head and chest forward, yeah, that's it, crumble, that's it, that's it, that's it, and extend, and, and out breath, <sighs> come back up, works better actually with two breath cycles there, so do take your time, make sure that you're moving, your strong movement is on your out breath, so he's coming down on his out breath, we're having a little length and a little reach, on that in breath that works for extension on the in breath and then as he comes back up. Brilliant stuff. So now the obliques version. Uh, so you had a name for this. this is a, you do something similar to this? Russian, Russian twist. twist. Quite like that. It's a bit more exciting than just obliques exercise. So with the arms now, we're going to take a rounded shape of the arms. This helps to keep us aware of the arms. If we have to form a shape, it stops us hyperextending the elbow, um, keeps, keeps the wrists and hands soft and makes the emphasis on what the body is doing because this is trunk work. This is the muscles there in the sides of the abdomen. So we're going to breathe in and take the arms up above the head. And on the out breath, as we crumple and roll halfway down, the arms will come in front. So the fingers are in front of the chest bone. Take a sneaky little breath. And on the exhale, the hips, knees and feet stay still, but the upper body twists. So it's not just an arm movement, it is the upper body. Come back up. So in breath to lift. And out breath, we've got that half roll down, crumple, crumple. Good. A little sneaky breath. Out breath to rotate. So it is hard not to get those legs involved. They're there just to provide a connection with the floor, but we're really working that midsection. Deep internal muscles. Crumple, crumple, crumple. So the back is just gently stretching, the abdominals are engaging. And as we twist, remember I'm always saying to you that all your painting, decorating, gardening, golf, so many things use um, rotation. And we really help to protect the spine if our muscles are adapted and strong for the purpose here. It's really nice. I'll go and keep that deep abdominal connection. Very nice. So you can always stop the video and do a few more if you need a bit more practice. Thanks, Cameron. Well done.
So we're on to working the glutes. As you know, we're always thorough. Our practices may have a slight bias towards the upper body or the legs or whatever, but we do always work the whole body in a balanced way. And glutes can often be a slightly weak element for us. Sometimes our glutes don't work as hard as they should. Now in the last practice, you took your bridge with your legs on a ball, so it really checked your alignment and your stability. Today we're going to work on coordination and there's a little bit of a legs focus today as well. So Cameron is going to take um, a more advanced sequence. Now, if you don't want to do the more advanced part of this exercise, just work your bridge on two feet, out breath to engage and lift, in breath to lower. So please do modify if you don't feel that this variation is suitable for you. So arms are long by the sides, so I'm going to ask Cameron, I know he's been in quite a little bit of sort of working out, so just relax those shoulders a little bit more, and feel the bony landmarks of the whole body, so where your weight is making a connection into the mat. So for our bridge, we do need to stand the feet and have that orientation, but it is the glutes that, is going to lift, that are going to lift the body up. So we're going to take a breath in. And on our out breath, we're going to actively squeeze the glutes as if you're squeezing the juice out of an orange. So we squeeze the glutes and we lift up in our basic bridge on that out breath. So on an in breath, Cameron is going to stand on his left foot and extend his right leg to the ceiling with a lightly pointed foot. Flex at the top. Slight pause. Now, maintaining this entire position, he's going to turn his leg out a tiny bit to engage that inner thigh. And he's going to reach out, over and down. Now, he may or may not be able to touch the floor, but we don't want too much twist. We don't want too much lowering of your hips. Your bum is keeping you up off the ground. Come back up on an in breath. And then lower back to the floor on one leg, which tests each uh, hip, knee, foot connection in turn. So that lowering on one leg is a key part of the technique today. So we've got a breath and an out breath to lift. So you can't see Cameron's nice glutes and his shorts very well, but they are working very well. Cameron has quite mobile knees and so glute work is really important for him because that really assists with his stability of his knee. And I talk about this in class for all of you with your hip and knee issues, we work quite a lot on our glutes. Now you may find when you do this that one side performs more readily than the other because you will maybe have a preferred leg, one leg that you prefer standing on. We're going to do that once more on each side. It's a long sequence so you may want to take a pause and, and have another go. So do it four times, have a break, have another four times. So we're extending, 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 and flexing the foot. Just extend that knee a little bit more, that's it. As you rotate the leg a little bit, feel how your inner thigh, your deep hip muscles are connecting. However, the supporting side is maintaining its stance in parallel. So this is where you're doing different things with, both, with each side of the body, and that is very good for the brain to organize that. It's not symmetrical. Your standing leg is in parallel, held strongly through your glute, hamstring, calf and foot. And your working leg, a moving leg if you like, is having its deep hip rotators activated, the adductor muscle activated. However, the movement of the moving leg should not be distorting what's going on with the rest of the body. So you may have to just take stock of whether tension is creeping in on this more demanding exercise. And if so, um, be honest with yourself, have a little break, regroup, and go back and just correct anything that might not be too, too strong. So I'm going to ask Cameron how to bring his knees to his chest because that's strong work. When you do your bridge work, it shouldn't cause discomfort in your lower back. If you do get discomfort in your lower back, maybe the challenge of that exercise is a bit too great, or your technique might be slightly off. It really should be working your glutes primarily, and a little bit of activation through the legs, and of course your deep abdominals. 
So we're again looking at the back of the body and now we're looking to do some extension work with the spine. So when Cameron did his half roll downs, his full roll down and his Russian twists or oblique leaks there was working with the abdominals. We've then worked with the glutes and now we're going to work with the muscles um, of the spine. So we're activating the muscles on the back of the body. So I have done with you your arrow and your diamond press which focus more on the upper spine and the shoulders. So what we need to do here is to make sure that we don't sacrifice any good work we've already done posturally for that area. So I'm sure I'm getting Cameron to just settle the shoulder blades, keeping the collarbones wide, keeping length at the back of the neck so that there's a gap between your hairline and the collar of your shirt. The legs can be just a tiny bit wide and parallel, just to give a little bit of space, but not too much effort through the legs. We don't want to grip too hard with the glutes. A very slight closing of the glutes and activation of the deep abdominals does allow some support so that there's not too much pressure through that lower back. So he's going to take a breath in and on an out breath we're using the hands on the towel so that he can slide comfortably up into his extension. So you'll see that we're trying to feel the movement through the heart and he just corrected his head and neck alignment there because his head was just slightly going too far. So we want a sequential movement, so we want to feel uh, that, that from the base of the spine and all the way up, out through the crown of the head, there's a flow of energy. There's a flow of energy from the tailbone out down through the heels. So that instead of a feeling of sort of crushing and squashing, um, as he moves into that extension, there's actually a feeling of the two ends of his body escaping away from each other, not necessarily trying to get towards each other. Cameron obviously has a lot of mobility and strength, so he's, he's fortunate and he's trained um, a lot with his back. Um, so he can demonstrate movement throughout the whole of his spine. If you were watching me do this, you would notice that in this upper part of my back, there's, there's less articulation. Um, so we're all going to look and feel different doing this. Now you could do this on a different breathing rhythm because sometimes it feels quite nice to inhale as you lift. So I'm just going to get Cameron to do that. Just work it out for what feels good for you. So you could breathe in as you come up. And then exhale as everything releases into the floor. There's no right or wrong, but you do need to maintain your breathing rhythm rather than holding your breath. So you can inhale. And then it feels quite nice just to get that sense of release. So thank you, Cameron, that's brilliant. You might want to sit back onto your heels and just rest in the child pose for a moment. So we're going to work on the adductors now, the inner thighs. And although we don't always have an opportunity in the halls to have everybody using a wall, I do usually suggest to you to, perhaps if you do this at home, to use the um, flat edge of your sofa or a wall if you have enough room. We're fortunate today because this little stage here is absolutely perfect. So really good for our proprioception, our sense of where our body is in space and what muscles are working and how one part of our body really relates to the other to use the wall because sometimes we're just not quite in the position we think we are. So I would like Cameron to make sure that both hips are against the wall. So you may need to make an adjustment. The top leg is supported with the ball because if this is not at the right angle and doesn't have support, the effort can be felt more in the back and the top hip. Now it's really important to lift your belly button up and bring your abdominals up towards the wall behind you. Not using your hand to do that, using your deep abdominals. Going to get Cameron to take his top hand palm down so that he's got a little bit more connection and take it back a little bit. And the back of his head, because I know he's mobile enough, I'm getting him to connect to the wall completely. You may, may not find that happens for you. 
So it's the underneath leg we're working, it's those inner thighs. I'm going to ask Cameron to keep his foot relaxed because we don't want to do too much with the calf and the ankle. We want to know where it is, we want to know what's happening there. But the effort of lifting the underneath leg is going to be done with those adductor muscles. So in this position, what's so good about this is that if we set ourselves up really precisely, we know we're going to target exactly the muscle group we want and not let our bowel habits creep in. So we're going to breathe in. On an out breath, first of all, draw your belly button up off the floor, in towards your spine, back towards the floor, keeping shoulders and hips towards the wall, and then lift the underneath leg up. Now, if the heel is slightly higher than the toe, that, that will assist the work and back down. Cameron's got a slight softening in the knee there. It doesn't have to be completely straight, but I want Cameron to know whether he is, his leg is bent or straight, so for, for the purposes here, I'm going to get him to extend that leg. It's good, it's nice. And down. Um, so if we allow the toes to twist up, we may end up using the quads to do this work rather than the inner thighs. So this is why we need to make sure we heal. It's almost as though if he had ink on the back of his heel, it would paint a rather nice line up this beautifully painted wall here in the hall. So on an out breath, we've got that engaging, we've got a sense of the whole body in space, we're settling the shoulders, relaxing the neck, feeling the inner thighs, monitoring that we are feeling the effort where we want to feel it on the inner thigh rather than on the um, in, in the, too much in the waist and the back. We don't want to be pinching on the side of the body there to get the leg off the floor. It needs to happen from those inner thighs. I hope this is visible enough on film um, to get that sort of more intimate view of the muscle work there. So the knee can point straight forward, the toes face forward, and it's a feeling of the heel being a little bit higher. So we get Cameron to do one more. And he's got leg weights on, one kilogram leg weights on. It just helps to make you a little bit more aware of your leg, the way your foot is, a little bit more effort required. So you could use slightly heavier leg weights, but these are the ones I have. So that is your adductor exercise. I'm going to get Cameron to turn over now and work that on the other side. I would say to you, um, just kind of be aware of how you do that changeover. And one of the things that we play around with a lot is how to transfer weight, how to move our body with the, the most sort of economy of effort, with the most grace. So Cameron's going to lie down on this side. Oh, social distancing. So we are targeting the, the inner thighs. Sometimes when we work inner thighs, we also automatically work glutes. And on this exercise, we're isolating that so that we, we want to just feel this, feel the, the true integrity of that recruitment of the adductors. So I'm going to just move your knee a little bit more in line with your hips. So be careful that because we anticipate that there's going to be an effort involved to lift the leg, particularly with a weight, that you don't take that strain into the shoulders and the neck. So the top hand is flat on the ground, relax the wrist. So Cameron could bring his left hand slightly towards his navel because sometimes that, so down a little bit actually, that's it, that's it. So abdominals up off the floor and back towards the wall. So that as the leg lifts, you shouldn't feel a complete drop in the waist. There should be a crumpling into the floor in the side of the waist. Our deep abdominal um, muscles are keeping the posture of that side lying position. The shoulders are down. Is this the weaker leg? No? No, 
I'm sure. I'm sure they'll struggle like this. Struggle like Just be careful that you're not bending your knee. Yeah. Feel the leg through the back. That's better, that's better. It's just, it was just positioning. That's good, that's good. It's interesting because you may find on your second side that you have embodied the idea into a more um, coherent whole. So you may find that suddenly things start to flow better, but you might just find that your concentration wavers. So your second side may be less uh, mindful than your first side. So it's a good idea not to always work your right leg or your left leg first. Switch it about so that you're, you're not letting any bit of your body um, get away with things. Making sure that you're, you're in possession of as much knowledge about how your body works as possible. That way you'll start to know whether one leg is a little bit stronger than the other. So we do a couple more times on this side. Good to do eight to ten. You know that you've really achieved good practice on an exercise if you can perform ten um, without loss of technique and um, your energy levels are still managing the last few repetitions well. So your last one or two have got to be as good as the first. We don't lose the thread halfway through. So just extend that knee a little bit more. That's it. Feel the back of the leg lengthening against the wall. Not an easy exercise to do um, because there's a lot of thought going into that setup. So I'm going to invite Cameron to kneel towards the front edge of his mat now. So the knees are closer to the edge of the mat and some more of your shin on the mat. You'll notice that I usually um, plan for my stronger exercises towards the end of class by using some exercises in the beginning that give us the foundations and the groundwork for what your body will need to do later on. So of course I took at the beginning a um, sort of core practice that used full point kneeling but also kneeling on two knees. Now I don't suggest that we spend too long on knees and this, this may not be appropriate for some of you. So this exercise that Cameron's going to do now you can do as a lift of your outer thigh lying as Cameron did against a wall and instead of lifting the underneath leg you can do top leg lifts. You can also do this exercise that he's going to do just lifting the top leg and not doing the transfer of weight. You will see what I mean. But here we go. It's a, it's a great little exercise because there's a bit of fun and balance and challenge in this. So we start kneeling in the middle of the mat with the arms extended out to the side and as a preparation Cameron is going to tip to his left so that his left hand finds the floor and take his right leg out. Hopefully he'll still be on the mat because my mat fits me. I didn't know if it would fit Cameron. So what we are looking for is pretty much a vertical through the line. And it's really important that you lift out of your armpit. So we use that connection we found on all fours, now on one arm, and we keep the neck extended and he's hopefully smiling beautifully for the camera there in the front. Release the shin of the standing leg. So we want a nice alignment through the knee and foot on that standing leg. Taking a breath in is a feeling of reaching up through the right hand. And on the up breath, with a strong connection in the midsection, we're going to lift and extend out through the heel of the right leg. So Cameron's going to lift his right leg up off the floor with a flexed foot. So we're not going too high here. He's not turning it out. We want to work down those white stripes there into his, his deeper glutes. Come back down on the in-breath. On the next out breath, he's going to shift his weight, so he's standing on his right foot and his left hand, and his left inner thigh is going to lift, and it's knee to knee. Perfect. With no twist of the pelvis, so just watch out, that's it. And back down. So that was maybe a little bit too slow, so we're going to take a breath. On an out breath, we extend through the heel, reach out, feel the lift. Stand back down, take a breath in. Big breath, this is big effort. Out breath light, 
Feel the strength in your trunk and in your legs. Come back now. In breath, nice. Just watch, no twist, no arching of the back. Do watch that you don't let your back get too tight. Use your abdominals really strongly to keep the rib hip integrity at the front. Well done. Well done. Just watch the placement of your right foot going slightly further back there. So lift up, that's it, that's it. So as it comes down, keep it just slightly bigger, bigger, that's it. And then take the other leg back, 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 back a bit. Knee, 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 knee to knee. Yeah, there you go. That's it. And down. Uh, well done, well done. One more time. Even if you just manage this once or twice, it's a great challenge. You do have to keep monitoring your upper body. Now Cameron is very strong with his upper body. Um, probably this is a little more testing for him actually with his um, pelvic strength. So his upper body is doing really well. So, on to the other side. Now, if, I, if, if we weren't being so careful, that I probably would have given Cameron a little bit of sort of hands-on um, support there just to check his alignment because it did go slightly off. But that's okay because I'm sure you'll be looking at this with a good critique as well. This looks... Uh, now, we look better aligned on this side, so perhaps um, his sort of um, lumbar pelvic stability just feels a bit more comfortable doing it this way around. Nice, well done, well done. So as you can see, the camera's got into the groove of that, so he's sort of um, self-correcting himself there. This is a new exercise for Cameron, he hasn't done this particular connotation. Well done, just make sure when you lift it doesn't go too far forward, keep that, uh, yeah, that's it, that's it. That's nice, knee to knee, lovely, lovely, nice. So really strong, we're really using those uh, sort of armpit muscles that we're using, the serratus, the support muscles around the base and the shoulder blades, um, using the connections through the arm muscles into the palm, rather than losing the body weight into the shoulder. Well done, Cameron. Round of applause, that was nice. So as I said before, there is a bit of progression and build in these programs. The feedback that I'm getting from all of you is that you are keeping your fitness levels up, you've been really committed to keeping up your exercise regimes, but you may feel that you want to modify this one a little bit. Now, I'm going to ask Cameron just to go back to four point kneeling. So, if you don't feel that holding a plank for any length of time is right for you, and as you know, I don't advocate holding any position statically for too long, the bodies are designed to move. But we do need to build strength, particularly our ability to get up and down off the floor, to resist gravity. We need to keep muscles strong. So one of the ways that you can do this, instead of just sort of staying in a plank, you can just move from your four point kneeling, taking one foot back, checking that you feel stable, and the other foot back. If this is a bit strong on the toes, you can maybe try this in a pair of trainers, that might just protect your toes. And just keep coming down, so come back down, making sure the knees go under the hips, and then back into your, into your plank. So now I'm going to ask Cameron to stay there in his nice plank there, just maybe drop the hips a teeny tiny bit, that's it, not too much. And just rock slightly forward and back, just so that you can feel where you've got movement, where you've got stability, and where do you need your head to be, if are your abdominals engaged, is your pelvis level, how do the feet and ankles feel? Now then, I'm going to ask Cameron to take a breath in, and on the out breath, he's going to use his core muscles, his deep abs, and his glute really strongly, and lift his legs so that his leg hopefully is in alignment with his back. So just that's it. So without sticking your bum up in the air, without going into a, a V shape or a downward dog shape, he's maintaining the plank. The art of this is to maintain the integrity. So I'm noticing he does slightly rotate his pelvis to lift the right leg. You are stronger on your right leg. You prefer being on your right leg, don't you? That's where you take your weight, yeah. So I'm going to get Cameron to just pay a little bit more attention. He is less happy standing on his left leg than being the right. And that's okay, you know, we're all a little bit like that. Have you done enough, Cameron? Shall we just take that one more time so that if people have been watching, they can now join in. So we're going into our plank position. Keep it dynamic the whole time. You know, have a dialogue with your body. You're not just stuck there reading the newspaper. You're actually activating those muscles every time you go into a movement. And as you come out of it into the, 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 
a stable shape. So more abdominal work to keep that pelvis level that side. So, so camera is very stable, very stable. Go for it, go for it, go for it. Really use that glute, use that underbump, use that underbump bit more. Keep the knee nice and straight. Go on, work it, work it, work it more. Yeah, well done, Cameron. Come down. Fabulous. So we're now going to do front leg pull. The one you've just seen was back leg pull. Um, so this, so again, it's, a, it's, a, it's another sort of plank type position. It is, it is our asking of us that we use our muscle strength, particularly through our arms and shoulders and trunk, to hold our body weight off the floor. So, you may not want to do the leg raising part, and certainly, you know, the, these are strong exercises, so don't attempt these if you have got any residue of, of problems. Um, so I'm just going to get Cameron to stretch through his feet. This is easier if you're able to stretch through your feet, point your toes, yeah, so that you're using more the back of the leg rather than pushing down through the knee. His fingers are forward, the arms are straight but not locked too tight into the joint using muscles, chest lifted. Use your glutes really strongly and come down. So take a breath in. Keep stretching through, not just the toes, but the ankle as well. Keep reaching through the foot, keep reaching through the foot. Now imagine the, 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 the string running through the whole body, so out through the crown of the head, shoulders down, sit your nice and soft, abdominals held, bit more glute, bit more glute, bit more glute, that's it, and come back down. Okay. So, after a moment's rest, now going to do the front leg pull. So this is more demanding. This is where we start to integrate the strength of holding our body weight off the floor, but also moving as well. So we're going to come up on that out breath. We're going to take a breath in. And then we're going to send the right leg up. Flex to come down and point. And the other one, up. Flex, come down and point. Lovely, and keep lifting. So keep reevaluating the whole thing. Working to draw up that kneecap so that the quad muscles are really extending the knee. Keep using the feet, using the backs of the legs, good glutes. Good, good, and up, and flex. So although this is not so much a hamstring stretch as such, the movement itself it is using those hamstrings. Well done, Cameron, last time. Up, flex, point, and there's a nice release. You're going to come and sit down, you're going to lift up. And then on and out breath, folding over, relaxing the head, lengthening back of the legs, holding behind the heels, flexing the feet, toes up to the ceiling, a little bit more stretch for the ankles and calves. Nice work, really reaching through the back of the legs. Well done, Cameron. So now Cameron and I are just going to have a bit of a play um, because when he comes home, he gives me all these beautiful ideas and we wrap ourselves around the furniture in our living room. So I did just say to him, do you think we could just have a bit of a roll around on the floor? And so as you know, I've been finishing my sequences with a little bit of movement. Just feel your body flowing from one shape into the next, moving around the floor. Because, you know, movement is not just about the exercise, it's about, that. It's about how that translates into being able to do all the things we love. And Cameron and I, of course, love dance. And um, he has given me a new appreciation of what it's like to enjoy the floor and going with gravity rather than spending most of my classical ballet life trying to defy gravity. So here we go with a little movement sequence. And I'm sorry, mine will not be perfect. So watch Cameron for this if you want to try this at home. Are oh, you ready? We're going to the left, Cameron. Ready? Okay, very good. And do it again. To the right. To the right.
So that was your practice in the village hall with Cameron, but I did think that um, you should have a, li a little piece of Sam. So his, his little downward facing dog stretch was his com contribution. Right, Sam, we're gonna stretch. Oh, stretch, stretch, yes. And I think now he maybe does deserve a prize. So Sam, give me a paw, give me a paw. Oh, good boy, well done. So see you next time, everybody, bye-bye.